7 o'clock here on RTE1. Now, though, Maxwell realises that there's more to Vaza than meets the eye. Now that I have a copy of the uncorrupted Wilson file, I have everything I need to prove Isaac's guilt. A blow-by-blow -blow description of every illegal move I've made since I swapped those patients in theatre. He just learned his nephew's a lying, cheating criminal. Mom. I went to the airport as soon as I heard. Your father said I was overreacting, but I didn't like the thought of you here by yourself. Thank you. I was lucky with the flights, if you can call it luck. It was one of those no-frills budget outfits. It was all I could get. That was an eye-opener. I bet. Hello. Oh, poor old thing. How's he doing? He hasn't woken up after the operation. We won't know until he does. You look awful. Have you eaten? No, I can't remember. Go and get something. I'll stay with him. Maybe some fresh air. Off you go. Go on. I'll still be here when you get back. falling over no I was in the room with him and I couldn't see any other way I had a pillow in my hands it was so close but you didn't do it you're a lot of things Isaac Worthington but you are not a killer there was a message on my phone he's read Luke's file he knows everything I have never heard him so angry so, yes, you can probably blame me for his fall and the head injury. But you haven't spoken to him. Has he told anyone else? Mm, I don't know. Yeah, but he could wake up at any moment and spill the whole story to my mother. Is she here? Look, I hate to say it, but there's every chance that when Garth wakes up, he won't be able to tell anyone anything. Mmm! Oh. How much coffee have you had tonight? Three cups. And you wonder why you can't sleep? I can't sleep because I've got a head full of this. Well, you know what to do about it. Oh, drop out of med school. Brilliant, Jill. And I suppose this was dinner. It's only the first course. There's chocolate biscuits in the fridge. OK, here's the deal. Tomorrow, I will make you lunch. It'll be full of brightly coloured things called fruit and vegetables. Don't freak out. Some people think they're good for you. I was raised by doctors, so I know how to eat properly, OK? But you don't do it. A potato chip is not a vegetable. Strictly speaking, it is. And when was the last time you exercised? I exercise every time I do an ambo shift. You try carrying a 100kg patient down five flights of stairs with a heavy monitor attached to him. It's not easy. Uh, especially if you're unfit. Tomorrow, three laps of the park, I'll race you. You'll win. Oi! I'm saving you from yourself. Mmm, yum. We won't know how bad things are until he wakes up. No one sugar. Thanks, darling. I forgot to ask, us, Joseph? The operation was at a delicate stage when I left. Oh, Chris is thinking of you. He'd be here if he could. Yeah, of course. I didn't like leaving them, but I thought one of us should be here, for your sake as much as anyone's. Well, you didn't have to come. The inside of one hospital is much the same as another. I may as well be pacing the corridors of this one. 
Not that there'll be much more pacing tonight. I'm exhausted. Mm, I bet. What do I have to do to get a blanket or two? Sorry? Oh, that chair looks comfortable enough, but they keep the air conditioning on so high, don't they? Oh, you're not thinking of sleeping here. I want to be here when he wakes up. Well, then tomorrow, when you really need you, you'll be dead on your feet. There's a comfy bed at Chris's waiting for you. What if something happens in the night? Well, let us know straight away. So drink your tea and then I'll take you home, all right? Hey. Make yourself useful. I went a bit nuts at the fruit and veg department. <laughs> what is this? Don't know, but it's going in a salad. <laughs> oh, and I think I think that's a banana. Oh, do you mind? I'm starving. <laughs> Doesn't DK feed you anymore? Oh, he had an early start. Oh, and you were too weak to reach for the cereal box. Yeah, go on. Honestly, you're just like a hunter. If I didn't remind him to eat properly, just reach for another bag of chippies. So I'm making him lunch. I get up. You're trying to find your way to his hat through his tummy. Ah, oh, actually, I found a shortcut a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> but now I've got him, I don't want him turning into a big, fat, pasty blimp. Oh, that is so sweet. It must be love. So, how are things with you and TK now the ex is back in the picture? Well, the ex is not back in the picture. She's... Hang on. We're supposed to be talking about you. But, hey, seriously, I have never seen you make that much effort for a guy. What effort? went to the supermarket mm, and spent nurses' wages on something you don't even know what to do with while the rest of us were still in bed. Seriously, that is dedication. Huh? I just can't see the logic. Did people suddenly stop having heart attacks in the middle of the night? Have all the drunk drivers just gone away? Well, you know, Callum, when he gets an idea in his head. Yeah, that's all he's got space for in there. One lonely idea at a time. Well, honestly, a couple of years ago he was Mr. Community Health and now all he cares about is the neurosurgical unit. Yeah, it'll be a good thing to have. Yeah, but why does he have to sell ED down the river to get it? Well, we jumped up and down about it, but he never showed any signs of budging. It doesn't have to be over, does it? Is there anything that I can do? Maybe. <laughs> but I'm not leading the charge on that. That's uh, Maxwell's job. Hey, keep up the good fight. E.D. Oh. oh, I was just telling about the cuts. All right. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, well, it's not so much funny as... Uh, <clears throat> filthy. Moving right along. Um, I was just going to ask you, um, are you going to that CME meeting with the E.D. guys at Central? Sure will. They'll want to hear about the Sydney trip. Yeah, ask about the night shifts coping with the new workload. I've been hearing a few horror stories already. Yeah? Yeah, it might be a good chance to drum up some support. Well, we need to meet you, I suppose. Yeah, I don't think uh, Lee and the good fight's really high on Maxwell's agenda right now. Yeah, uh, I don't get it. Um, when he got back from Sydney, he was all gung-ho. He said he wouldn't renew his contract unless E.D. went around the clock again. Yeah, well, he didn't have a new girlfriend distracting him then. He does now. What's your name, mate? He's not telling. I've already tried. Hey, can you uh, tell me what happened? Did you take a fall? Yeah. How'd it happen? Talk to me. I felt dizzy, eh? You feel like you wanted to be sick? Yeah. When you had a fall, what did you have? Window. OK. Uh, I took a cardiac. Uh, did you notice his breath? It smells sweet. Are you diabetic, mate? Yeah. You've been eating properly, checking your sugars and all that? No, not lately. How do you usually manage insulin? Yeah, yeah, but I ran out. That's no good, eh? Um, you're probably what we call hypoglycemic. That explains the dizziness. Blood sugar's 20. OK, I'm going to start you on an insulin infusion. Uh, right, Mata, here, we'll set that up for you. Sure. You sure you don't want to tell me your name? It'd be a big help. OK. Um, I'm going to hook you up to some IV fluids, and I'm going to take a closer look at that leg for you. Yeah, excuse us for a sec. Well, he's not looking after himself. I'll do a guess to confirm, but I'm pretty sure it's diabetic keto acidosis. And the story about his leg doesn't add up. The wound's all wrong. OK, so he's lied about his injury, and he won't tell us his name. What would that suggest? 
Well, it doesn't really matter. We just need to come. Hey, hey, where do you think you're going? Hey, he stole a syringe, called security. Back to your old stomping ground after all. Yes, I wish I could say it's like I've never been away. No, but you'll notice a few changes. A bit of turnover in the nursing staff, for one thing. Yeah, I was thinking more of the nine hours every day the place isn't open anymore. Call me crazy, but I used to love a good night shift. Yes, well, that will just be temporary. Yeah, I know that's what everyone's been told. Uh, Brooke, uh, uh, if you have a window, I'd love to chat about your research. I hear great things from Shane Tucker. Thanks. Hi, hi. What's this about your research? Uh, the Kendall Committee has approved a clinical trial. Well, it's your story. I'll let you tell it. <clears throat> uh, there's an organic compound called dilacin that occurs naturally in uh, mushrooms, eggs, salmon, and a few other things as well. And with any luck at all, I'm about to prove that it's effective in asthma control. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And you discovered this all by yourself? Yeah, little old me. I know, it's ridiculous, isn't it? No, no, it, it's fantastic. I just can't believe you got there in, what, five months? Yeah, well, I spotted a trend early on. Yeah, even so, when I think of all the years that went into the MS research in Boston before they even started whispering about it to the medical journals, and I mean years and years, hundreds of mice died. What can I say? I got lucky for once. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thanks. You too. Hey, sexy. Catch. Is that your idea of exercise? I barely had to move. Oh, well, you will. You wait. Hey, uh, have you guys seen a scraggly-looking dude? Big gash in his leg. Uh, about 5'10", brown hair. Probably in a big rush to get away from the place. Well, who is he? I don't know. He didn't give a name. Lied about his injury. I mean, pretty much shot out the door as soon as he knew we were sus to him. Oh, it took a syringe. Oh, and his pockets were full of cash. It was, like, falling out everywhere. And you're out here chasing after the guy? Yeah, two guys around the back looking. Do all the sick patients in triage know that you're running around wasting time on some low life? He's diabetic. He could have DK. Too bad. He obviously sounds like a crumb. I mean, if he doesn't want to be here, let him go. You'll know this one, Garth. Capital of Uruguay, ten letters. No. M something something T something. I should know it myself. I'm sure I used to. Let me see. Ah. Uh, Sorry. Bella, come in. What do you like at South American capitals? Um, <laughs> relax, please. It's not a test. Oh, well, the only South American capital I know is Lima because Yvonne, who used to work at admissions, went to Peru and she sent back this gorgeous postcard. It's Uruguay we're looking for. This old devil knows, but he's holding out on me. Mm. Well, I hope he wakes up soon. She's a lovely girl. She is. I can see why Garth's so fond of her. But how on earth she ended up with you? She didn't end up with me, did she? She had a lucky escape. She deserves a lot better. I wish she wouldn't say things like that. There's nothing Mons wrong. Mons of a day, it has to be. Of course. So do you think he'll go to another hospital? Hey. You know, what's his name? I mean, he must know he's in a bad way, right? Ah, sorry. I thought you meant Callum for a second. Wishful thinking. <laughs> Go a drink? Ah, no, nothing. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Maxwell? He doesn't look like an HOD finding for his patch to me. OK. Tell me if you think that that looks totally lame. Pop quiz. Murray would not let me out the door unless I promised to rake up a team. Well, it could be fun, I suppose. And what else am I supposed to do with my night? Update your blog. I keep looking for your next post, but there hasn't been one in Yonks, you lazy wench. Well, I am posting something later. If I get it finished, quiz night, yes or no. OK, I'm in. Cool. You'll be great at all the sports questions and stuff. Oh, I know what that means. Every other category, keep your mouth shut. Well, Daniel's coming too, and he's OK at the sciencey stuff. So is Hunter. Yeah, because he never stops swatting. Well, I'm sure we can drag him away for one night. Do we have to? You guys fighting? No, he just rubbed me up the wrong way, that's all. There was this patient that desperately needed treatment, but there was something dodgy about him. He got scared and did a runner. The guy could be a total crim, but we don't know and we're not supposed to care. Hunter hears about it and is all like, let him rot. He hasn't even met the guy. Mm-hmm. That's my brother, and I blame Penny. Who? Paula. Whatever her name is. Ask Hunter. Just don't be surprised if he doesn't want to talk about it. OK, bye. 
This is funky, isn't it? <laughs> That's not a word that trips lightly off your tongue. Yes, it is funky. And very reasonably priced, you'll be pleased to hear. Well, I'm not sure I'm hungry. Too bad, I've already ordered for you. That was Gladys again, reminding me about Eliza. Uncle Gus Greyhound, she's been in the kennels for the last few weeks, and someone was meant to pick her up this morning. Oh, dear. But she can stay where she is, best place for her. I'll call him. Thank you. I'm sure Garth will appreciate everything you're doing for him. I do it for anyone. <laughs> I don't believe that for a second. <laughs> it's nice to see you doing it for the family, though. You sound surprised. Honestly. Six months ago, I was ready to write you off as a spoilt brat and promise myself I wouldn't make the same mistakes with Joseph. What's changed? You have. More than you realise. It could have gone either way, of course. What does that mean? Turning off the money tap. It felt like turning off life support, but we had to do something. I remember saying to your father, either he'll learn his lesson and be a better person for it, or we'll lose him completely. It hurt. Still does. But hey, now I know where to buy my mother a nice cheap lunch. You should call the kennels. No, please. There's something else I want to say. I'm giving you back access to your trust fund. Why? Why now? I'm not completely heartless, Isaac. You've taken the knocks and learned from them. That's all we ever wanted. Huh. Have you looked at the uh, online petition lately? We're still getting signatures. Yeah? Yeah. I reckon it's time we uh, printed it out and put it in front of the DHB. What do you reckon? Mm, not so sure. Well, have you another way to put the pressure on? Because if you have, your staff are waiting to hear about it. Callum and I have already made an agreement. ED will go back to 24-hour service in six months. That's the best I could do. What's the trade-off? Well, I signed a new contract in three months. Win-win, I'll call it. Uh, you didn't think to tell us. What, and Bruce Cullum's ego even more? I don't give a stuff about Mackay's ego. Well, you should. That's what he does most of his negotiating with. I squeezed a commitment out of him when he was determined not to give us one. He wanted on quite, and I couldn't see the harm. This uh, new contract of yours, um, get yourself a decent pay rise. It's none of your business. Mm. <laughs> you know what it looks like, don't you? Management's sticking together. You get yourself a cushion new deal, Callum gets you to shut up, and all we get is some vague promise he'll never have to keep. Is that what you think of me? I'm just wondering if Vasa wasn't right. Because wherever your priorities are these days, and all your staff. You really want to know? I'll tell you. Uh, Penny was an orderly. Brody and I needed a flatmate, so she moved in. We both fancied her, but... Uh... She chose you. Smart girl. Anyway, turns out the reason she was at the hospital was to get close to Scotty. He was in the army with her dad, um, East Timor, years ago, but her dad never came back. He was shot. There was this whole murky story about what actually happened. Anyway, Penny had it in her head that Scotty and his mates just let him die. And get this, she was picking them off one by one as revenge. Oh, that really is psycho. But if you met her, you'd think she was the sweetest, nicest girl. The whole thing was an act. Her name wasn't even Penny, it was Paula. And in the end, I had to hand her over to the cops. It's the worst thing I've ever had to do. And all this happened last year? Yeah, and there was this druggie who I went out of my way to help, only I come across her and her boyfriend in the back of the ambulance stealing drugs. Man, did I pay for that random act of kindness. What happened? Oh, there was a scuffle and I didn't come out of it so good. That's why I don't let that guy who did a runner get to me. I mean, there's some people you just can't help. The only thing is to lock them up and throw away the key. Whatever you're celebrating, you should do it more often. Pop another two crates of stuff gathering dust. You're the only ones who buy it. Two crates, and there's a challenge. Hmm. Well, I mean, we both know you can barely afford one bottle. To my beautiful mother. Thank you, Cecile. What for? For finally seeing me as the mature, responsible son she's always wanted. I'm still not sure what I'm drinking to. My mother's signature on a piece of paper telling me I am officially stinking rich again. She's given me access to my trust fund. Well, if I were you, I would take the money and run. Put it somewhere where she can't claw it back. I am way ahead of you. Murray's gonna have to find someone else to buy those two crates. Unless we get through them at the leaving do. Or maybe we should sneak away. 
probably safer. We? Oui. I'm leaving the country. And if you know what's good for you, you're coming with me. Well, when you put it so gallantly, how can I resist? What's to keep you here? A little thing called a clinical trial. The fact that I am finally being taken seriously as a doctor. And how long is that going to last? I beg your pardon? Well, a minute ago, you were fretting about seropods being onto you. You know me, I'm probably being paranoid. And that's what you've got to look forward to. Or you could run away with me and never have to work again. I mean, think about it. Paris, Hawaii, Montevideo, I don't care. You choose. Just don't take too long. Uh, I just had TK in my exam having a go about the ED cups. And the more he talked, the more he sounded like you. And then I find out that you've been in his ear about how useless I am. Every charge you could get by the sound of it. Once, twice maybe, but he really didn't need telling. OK, here's an idea. You run your department, I'll run mine. Well, are you sure you're up to it? Because that would mean focusing on your job rather than your girlfriend. Well, you've already solved that problem, haven't you? Now that I'm never going to see her. Excuse me, Nicole is on night shifts for a very good reason. Yes, in your twisted little mind, maybe. Are you accusing me of something? Well, there's no need. You know what game you're playing better than I do. Uh, listen. Okay, I don't care which deluded nurse you're sleeping with or how you run your precious ED. I'm just trying to get on with my life, do my job, and keep my daughter in clothes and food. Do you mind? Come on, that's it. Run. Faster. All right. You ready for this one, yeah. Jill? Bring it. <laughs> Genius. Take your time. <sighs> Joe. Get back. OK, OK, we're going. Come on. Listen to me. I know who you are. I work at the hospital. I'm a friend of one of the nurses who was looking after you. She's worried about you. Why don't you let us take you back there? I'm a nurse too. He's a med student. All we want to do is make sure you get treated. I said, get back. Jill, let's get out of here. I've been in this situation before and I've got to tell you, it did not end great. We're just talking. There's no harm in that, is there? I'm not going back there. You need treatment. I know what you're trying to do. You, you just want to turn me in. No. I don't like that doctor dude who hasn't called the cops already. There won't be any cops. I promise. No! no! I'm not going back there. You, you hear me? The leaders find out just how much their weight loss has benefited their health in Operation Transformation tonight at half past eight here on One. But next up, Doctors follows a weather update.